is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to Holy Mass this day. Uh, since we are not presently distributing the Holy Eucharist to the faithful due to the coronavirus, we do begin by offering a prayer of spiritual communion. And so therefore let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament, in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will recite the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Bring us O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our heart come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take away our sins from us, O Lord, that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, 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 have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, 
We worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, you reveal that the greatest law is love of you and our neighbors. Inflame our hearts with the fire of your love, and so strengthen our love for one another. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the solemnity of brotherly love, we take the first reading from the book of Jeremiah the prophet. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to another, Know the Lord, for all they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he wrongs you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times saying, I am sorry, you should forgive him. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul, the Apostle to the Romans. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. Love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. This I command you, love one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. But he, wanting to justify himself unto Jesus, asked, And who is my neighbor? These words are taken from today's Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verse 29. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We read in today's Gospel that there was a well-educated man, a lawyer, a scholar of the Law of Moses, who came to Jesus seeking an answer to one of the oldest and most important questions dealing with life. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Do you know the question of eternal life has existed in the New Testament since the fall of Adam and Eve from the garden? We continue to read that in the Old Testament, the struggle of the Jewish people who sought reconciliation um, reconciliation with God 
was an ongoing thing. We read that in the Messianic prophecies of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Michael, Daniel, Malachi, we read of the one that they spoke about, the Anointed One, who would reconciliate man with God. And it is through his sacrifice that he offered eternal life to those who would follow his teachings and seek fellowship with him. When asked about eternal life, Jesus asked the lawyer, how do you understand the law? The lawyer answered rightly by saying that eternal life is based upon the love of God and the loving of one's neighbor as oneself. But this lawyer wanted to justify himself. He didn't seem to have a problem with the first commandment of loving God above all things, but it seemed that he questioned the second commandment when he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? The word neighbor is defined as the person who lives near or next door. But in today's world, are we all not neighbors living next to one another? I feel that the parable of the Good Samaritan is so appropriate today, for it should cause all of us to pause and ask, as the, as the lawyer did, who is my neighbor? Do you know that the Samaritans were hated by the Orthodox Jews? Samaritans were considered unclean, unholy, and travelers would purposely go out of their way to travel outside of Samaria. And I am sure that the Samaritans, in like manner, hated the Orthodox Jews. Even Jesus tells his apostles not to go to Samaria. And yet Jesus uses this unclean and unholy person to answer the old age question of obtaining eternal life. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we see examples of the goodness in humanity, of neighbors helping neighbors, strangers helping strangers. This humanity is found in the aftermath of severe weather occurrences, such as tornadoes, hurricanes, and earthquakes. It is also found in the selfless work of volunteers, such as Doctors Without Borders, and the white helmets of Syria. It is found even today among the countless firefighters who are battling the wildfires on the West Coast and in the recent devastation of Hurricane Laura. We see this brotherly love through the millions of dollars that are donated every year to such charitable institutions as the Children's Shriners Children's Hospital for ch Crippled and Burned Victims, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Disabled American Veterans, and many others. The spirit of brotherly love also exists in the hearts of many of our parishioners and friends of Holy Name of Jesus, who throughout the year reach out to help others in need and give without asking for anything in return. You know, whether it is in the battling of the effects of the coronavirus or peaceful protests against social and racial inequality and injustices, the example of the Good Samaritan must shine above all differences with the realization that injustice to one is injustice to all and hatred is nothing more than hatred. You know, unfortunately, we see so much anger, hatred, division, 
and violence in our world today and in the cities and neighborhoods of our nation. People of different backgrounds, different cultures, different political views, different opinions, all seek to justify themselves through their words and actions taken against others. I read just recently and am saddened that in our nation there are those who are trying to justify the use of firing paint guns at others even though they are considered as weapons in many states and there are laws that prohibit discharging a paintball gun in public except on target ranges. So what follows this form of insanity? Live bullets, of which we've also seen. The great Mahatma Gandhi once wrote, I object to violence, because when it appears to do good, it is temporary. But when it does evil, it is permanent. The story of the Good Samaritan was about one soul who was righteous unto God, who saw pain and suffering, and through his actions to a total stranger, answered the question of obtaining eternal life. It is found, my brothers and sisters, in the love and the compassion that our Lord Jesus Christ taught. Every teaching of our Lord has lessons to be learned. After telling the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus asks the lawyer, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus then said to him, Go and do likewise. Mercy. Did not our Lord, during his Sermon on the Mount, teach us that blessed are the merciful, for they in turn shall obtain mercy? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, on this, the solemnity of brotherly love, in the Polish National Catholic Church. May we all hear the words of our Lord, who commands us to love one another as he has loved us. May we all seek to be a little kinder, a little more understanding, a little more patient, a little more forgiving, and a lot more loving toward each other. May we all be a little less critical, a little less judgmental, a little less fault-finding, and more helpful to others. How can any one of us be justified before God without first considering the lessons that Jesus taught in this parable of the Good Samaritan? It is St. John the Apostle who writes this truth. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandments, but an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and in them in him there is no cause for stumbling. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
I be he weaving, one on God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. If this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. All loving Father, your Son taught us to love you and our brothers and sisters. May this offering serve to bring us closer to you and to one another. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to Father, O powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You have called us to love one another, demonstrating harmony among brothers and sisters and friendship among all neighbors. Your word tells us that everyone who loves is begotten of you. Through the love that we have for each other, may we all know that we are the Lord's disciples. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, seraphim and cherubim, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your Holy Church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide it throughout the world, together with its priests and all true believers of the Holy Faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, we pray this day and remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the homeless and the hungry, the unemployed, all those who have suffered and are suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for all abused and neglected children in our world and victims of violence both here and abroad as well as all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad and all present in this congregation imbued with faith in your holy care your rule and fatherly love wholeheartedly this day we unite in spirit with all those beginning with the most blessed mother mary mother of jesus christ Likewise, as apostles, and with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause for which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believed, professed, and were united with you through prayer in this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world, and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we to this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit and accept from your hands this holy bread and precious chalice as a longed for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. 
He promised this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power. By the multiplication of bread and feeding with it, a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold of giving it as food and drink to his disciples and friends, as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself am the living bread, come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterward, when the temporianic and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those for whom he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. I am the way and the truth and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me and my words stay part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me, will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, that where I am, to see the glory of mine which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these, and other words of the arch priestly prayer, and holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his heavenly Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Lord, we, your servants, and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him who is the giver 
of all temporal and eternal good gifts and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that their offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting light, and to those who during life strayed from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their sufferings. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant us your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused from my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness. 
may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me unto everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful Father, may this Eucharist, which is a pledge and sign of our love for, of your love for us, Help us to draw closer to you and to one another. Help us to forgive the faults of our brothers and sisters, as you have promised to forgive us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice 
which we, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I welcome you this day as we celebrated the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. May God's blessings be upon all of you and your loved ones. And we will conclude this morning's service with a final prayer in which we remember one another, our loved ones, and finally to offer a prayer for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed brothers and sisters. May God be with all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now let us pray for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, brothers and sisters. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.